So last week, we got this Node MCU working, and we were able to connect to it directly, but it was also plugged straight into the computer. What we want to do is to be able to use this without the computer, so we'll get that done this week. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to power this on, but this time, instead of using the laptop, I'm just going to use a regular phone charger. So we will plug this in and we have a light now. So it may take a minute for that to start up. Once it does, we'll be able to connect straight to it using a Wi-Fi network that this is actually providing. This is kind of acting like a wireless router right now, but it's not connected to the internet, so you can only connect to it. And the purpose of that is to be able to connect directly to it, even if you don't have a network around, and also so you can configure it wirelessly, which is what we're gonna do. We're gonna configure it so that instead of it providing a network, it joins our existing network. That way we can access it every time we reboot it or uh, even when it's just been powered on for a while, we can quickly connect to it while still being connected to the internet ourselves. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is like last time, I'm gonna go in and connect to the network that that is broadcasting. So I'll go to my Wi-Fi settings and instead of my connection, I'll go to WLED AP. I don't wanna connect automatically because I wanna always purposely connect to that particular access point. So now my little icon down here shows no internet because like I said before, this is not connected to the internet. So here we are and it says, hey, welcome. So our next steps are we can confi start configuring it to control LEDs or we can start configuring it for Wi-Fi settings. So we're gonna focus on Wi-Fi settings in this video. So the easiest thing to do is to just get it connected to our local network first and see how things go. So I'm gonna put in my network's details and then I'm gonna click save. So I put in my Wi-Fi network's SSID, my password. I'm leaving everything blank and we'll talk about this later. And I'm just giving it a name, wled-chasingsquirrels.local and that's it. So I'm gonna save and connect. So it says to connect to the new IP address, the new IP settings. So in theory, if all went well, this is now connected to my home Wi-Fi rather than providing its own. So let's go down here to Wi-Fi and it looks like it's no longer connected to the WLED and it automatically connected back to my home network. So that's great, that's exactly what we wanted. So let's try connecting to this guy right here using WLED dash chasing squirrels dot local. Okay, so that's not working for me. I'm not able to just type in the name that it is trying to choose. So what we're gonna have to do is find the IP address of this. But remember in the previous screen where it had all the zeros, that told it, hey, I'm not gonna configure you manually. Instead, I want you just to get an automatic IP address because I don't know about you, I don't give, I don't manually configure IP addresses for everything on my network. It just happens automatically. That's what we call DHCP. So this is configured to get a dynamic IP address. So let's find out what my network gave it. The way that I'm choosing to do that is using a tool called Advanced IP Scanner. So now that we've used Advanced IP Scanner to find the IP addresses of everything on our network, we're gonna filter this down to just ones that have WLED in the list. And you'll notice that I have several items and some of them have the same MAC address as each other. Well, that's because this one used to have a different IP address. The last time I connected this to my network a long time ago to test it out, it got a different IP address. So this is gonna be a temporary address. So the best way to connect to it, I see that it has, if I expand on Advanced IP Scanner, I can just right click and choose HTTP. It will open it up in a web browser for me. And it worked. This is now connected to my wireless network and it works. So 
the the downside is it never did let me just choose its name. That name didn't work out on my network uh, for some reason, and I did have to find the IP address of it. Now, we're gonna want to connect this to Home Assistant, do all kinds of fun automations with it, and maybe even add a shortcut on my phone so that I can quickly go to it and change settings for LEDs. I'm not gonna wanna have to open up an IP scanner every single time. So what that means is we have to make sure that this has the same address no matter what. Like if I unplug it and plug it back in, I want it to have the same address every time. So this is the part where I'm gonna just explain a tiny bit about networking, just enough to be able to choose how you wanna to connect to this going forward. So every network is different and uh, there are some principles that are the same. So if you are a network engineer, you can probably just, you know, ignore this part of the video, let it run in the background, click like, and uh, go do something else. But if you're like me when I first started projects like this, and you do need a little bit of help understanding this, that's what this video is for. Because as much as I would love to just say, do this and then it'll work, it really is gonna be important for you to understand your network and what the basics of IP addresses are in order to be able to do this for yourself because every network's just a little bit different. So one thing that you'll notice is when I did my IP address scan, mine always started with 192.168.86 and then all the addresses had something else at the very end. And that's because the most common local home networks start with 192.168. Then there's a random number between one and 255. And that'll be in the next slot. But then the last number, that's the kind of the number for each individual item. And one thing about the 192.168 IP range is you can typically only have up to 254 devices on that network. So you, if you have more than that, then you're probably not on a home network, at least currently. We're approaching that pretty quickly. So um, in the future, as I get more devices that are connected to my network to control lights and garage doors and things like that, I may have to expand to a different type of network altogether. We'll go over that in the future. But for now, you probably have 192.168.something.something. For me, I use Google Wi-Fi. So the first thing we need to do before choosing an address for this device is we need to find out what is my home Wi-Fi handing out automatically. So if this gets a different DHCP IP address every time I turn it on, well, everything else in my house is doing the same thing. I don't want to randomly choose an IP address for this and have that same IP used for something else in my house like a light bulb, a laptop, or you know something else, or the TV. So what I need to do is make sure and see what is the range that my Wi-Fi is normally handing out. So I'm gonna go into the Google Home app and choose Wi-Fi, and then I'm gonna click the little gear icon in the top and go to advanced networking and then there's LAN settings that's the local area network which is what this is connecting to so I'm going to go to LAN settings and now I get to see what my router's IP address is what my Google Wi-Fi's IP is what my subnet mask is and what the DHCP pool is so this is the pool of numbers that it's using to provide IP addresses for things automatically. And I can see mine starts at 20 and ends at 250. And I already know that the router is using up number one. So I know that I already have a lot of devices on my network. And I don't really know if I've already assigned static IP addresses for anything on my network. One way to find out is to use that advanced IP scanner and see, is there anything below 20? So if I clear my search and then I sort by IP address, I can see that there's only one, which is my Google Wi-Fi. And that's on dot one, we already know that. So really anything from two to 19 is available for me to manually configure on this. 
So great, we can actually just randomly choose one. So let's do that now. I'm gonna go back here to config, Wi-Fi setup, and I'm gonna choose 192.168.86.1. And I'm just gonna choose 10, because that seems like the easiest to choose. Okay, so now the gateway. Well, we know that that was 192.168.86.1. It is almost always gonna begin with a dot one or a dot two, usually dot one. And it already correctly added the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. That is the most common. It may even be a required standard for IP ranges that start with 192.168. So that's probably safe to leave like that. The only exception would be if you're using a bigger network that maybe begins with 10.0 or 10. anything, that subnet mask might be different. Um, you'll just have to look in your network settings. So once again, we saw those network settings in the Google Wi-Fi app. So whatever page you're looking at your LAN settings for your router, that should tell you what that subnet mask and what that gateway should be. So now we've chosen to give it this IP address. We will save and connect. It says that it was saved and to connect to the new IP, I kind of doubt that it happened that quickly, but let's type dot pin. Oh, okay, it did happen that quickly. So that's pretty cool. So now we have a node MCU that's connected to our Wi-Fi and has a static IP, so now we can use that IP address to connect, whether it's from our phone, our laptop, or anything else in the house that's on the same network. 